nursery. Amen. I could have started anywhere this morning. Amen. Because there's so many miracles in the Word of God. There's so many miracles that the Lord speaks of. Amen. But Matthew 14. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place. And the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke it and gave the loaves to his, to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude and they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the fragments that remained twelve baskets full. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the reading of your word today. We thank you, Father, for this body that is gathered together. Lord, oh, Father, the words of you today, I pray that they'll not grieve the Spirit, Lord, that they will rejoice. And Lord, I pray that you saw something in your word, Lord. Oh, Father, we've not seen something, God. Oh, Father, that we need today. Knowing that we need you more than anything. Knowing we need you to speak to us. We need to open our hearts.
Amen. He gives us what we need. And God said that he will provide. Yes. Amen. We believe the word of God. Who believes the word of God? Amen. 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 I hope you come in hungry today. I hope you come in to worship him and to praise him today. Because he said, oh, but my God just supply all your needs. Yes, Amen. Not just some of it. He said he will provide all of it. Yes, Amen. Amen. According to his riches in glory. I thank God that his riches don't run out. Amen. By Christ Jesus. Oh, praise the Lord. I hope you trusted in Jesus Christ today because how's he going to provide his riches? Jesus, 
He went over there apart by himself, even in a ship. He wanted to be alone, but we see the multitude was coming because they knew that Jesus was going to be there. Amen. Thank God. I hope you come into the house of God today knowing that Jesus was going to be here. Knowing that the Holy Ghost was going to show up. Amen. Knowing and expecting that the Holy Ghost is going to move and he can move if you'll be obedient. He can move. Amen. If you'll listen to the guidance of the Spirit. Because look, look here what a multitude we have. It may not be 5,000 or 4,000, but praise God, we've got a multitude of souls in here. He wants to feed you today. He wants to give you something in the Word of God. Listen, amen. Praise People God. are starving, but they're not starving for the word. Amos 8 and 11. Oh, the prophet, God told the prophet, he said, I'm going to send a famine upon the land. But it's not going to be a famine for food. It's going to be a famine for the word of God. Amen. People wanted to, <laughs> you, they wanted to hear it, but they couldn't hear it because it's going to be a famine. We're living in that famine right now. Amen. People are starving to death for the word of God. Amen. They're getting candy coated stuff. They're getting artificial stuff. They're getting stuff that's counterfeit. They're getting stuff that's been watered down. Amen. But people are starving to death for the word of God. Oh, and it was prophesied by Amos. Amen. In Amos 8 11, as I said, you can see. Amen. That famine, we're in it. That famine of the word of God. But people don't want to hear the whole word, they just want to pick what they want to hear. Right, amen. amen. They want to pick what they want to hear. Like I say, you go down to McDonald's, you can pick it. You can have it your way, can't you? Right. Amen. <coughs> go to Burger King, you can have it your way. Amen. You go to Hardy's, you can have it your way. Amen. You go here, there, everywhere, you can have it your way. Amen. But when you come in the house of God, you cannot have it your way. Yeah. You've got to have it God's way. Yeah. Because God's way is the only way. Yeah. Amen. It's God's way. Amen. Amen. That is the only way. And we have to be listening. Amen. These people's belly cried out. Amen. You see Jesus. He, he saw. I thought Lisa was going to preach a message down at Sunday school. He saw. Amen. And was moved with compassion. When you see people that are hungry, are you moved with compassion? I see people that are hungry for the word. It moves me. Amen. It really does. I don't see many people that's hungry for the word. Not even in the house of God. Uh -huh. oh, I see people that are hungry but not hungry for the word. Amen. You're hungry for the truck stop. Or you're hungry for Sony. You're hungry for whatever's on the stove. But you're not hungry for the word. Uh -huh. Oh, my. Amen. But when you're hungry for the word, you see Jesus saw that these people were hungry and he was moved. Under compassion. It moved him with compassion. Amen. What does compassion mean? It means suffer with pity. Endure it. Enlightening him. We see how he was moved. And that's an action word. He took action. So many of us, we see things and it doesn't move us. Amen. We see the person at the end of the exit. Hungry, U.S. A.F. veteran. Are they a con artist or not? I don't know. I saw one. I saw one man at this exit yesterday. I saw another one the day before. At the same one. At the same exit. Amen. But you know, God knows my heart, doesn't He? God knows His heart. Amen. If you're moved with compassion, you better take action. Amen. You better do something. And as Christians, we should be moved with compassion for people. Amen. Oh, it should move us. When we see people hurting, it should move us. If I stood up here and took a knife and stabbed myself in the arm, would it move you? It should, because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Amen. You ought to have compassion on me because I done lost my mind. Amen. Oh. But see, we should be moved with compassion towards people. But you know, it's hard sometimes to have compassion on people, isn't it? You know, one of the big sayings I say is, is it's hard to help somebody who won't help themselves. Right. Amen. I know I get a lot of amens on that, but is that what Jesus said? No, I don't think that's what Jesus said. He helped everybody. How many read he turned away? None. Makes me feel bad. Because I've had to turn a lot of people away from help. 
If we have everybody come to the door, hey, we wouldn't have enough. We'd be in, in bankrupt. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But you see, Jesus helped everybody. Amen. And that's what we know. Amen. He wants to help you today. He wants to help me today. He has compassion on us today. But we don't have that same compassion. We should, but we don't. Amen. We were out in Memphis. And we stayed there at, right beside St. Jude Hospital. Amen. In, in a nice hotel. And, oh, boy, we eat a nice breakfast every morning. Had fellas that, that would cook it for us. And, and man, eggs to order, omelets, whatever. Oh, a nice breakfast spread out. And come to find out, if you had to pay for that, it was $15 a piece, I think. Yeah. Man, I wouldn't pay that for I went to McDonald's got a dollar biscuit. But there was people. This is the actual church. That church is right across the street from the hotel we was in. There was people that would line up there every Monday and Wednesday. They were starving to death. They was living on the street. Well, they made that choice. Well, some of them may have, but they're still starving to death. They were still hungry. Amen. And they got in line. And it would be in line, but that ain't nothing. The line would go on out and down and around. Oh, I'd get out and run early. They come early. Don't think they didn't. They come early. Well, I guess when they run out, they're out. Amen. Thank God the Word of God doesn't run out. Amen. Amen. We have to come hungry. Amen. We see physical hunger in this world. We see physical hunger. We see people that are hungry, but God has already said that He is a God of miracles and that He will supply our every need. He's already said He can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask and think. So if we need help providing for somebody, amen, what do we need to do? We need to pray. Amen. We need to call on God because He said He's the one that's going to supply it. But how's He going to supply it? He's going to supply it through His people. Amen. Oh, somebody say, oh, no, I know where this is going. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't know what the Holy Ghost is going to do. Right. Amen. Oh, no. I hope he's speaking to everyone sitting here, these young people included. Amen. Amen. Because we're all part of it. We should all be hungry for the Lord today. We should all be hungry for the things of the God. Yeah. Oh, the multitude on the hill. You notice God is also a God of order. But you read on down, he divided them up. Amen. Put them in groups just before they passed it out. Amen. You see, God wants things done orderly. He does. He's got a specific way he wants things done. And when God wants it done a specific way, it has to be done that way. Amen. Like salvation. But I'm going to clean myself up now and get saved. No, that's not the way it works. You get saved. And God will clean you up. You get saved and he'll take care of you. Amen. Oh, thank God that's the way it works. So many people, so many churches want to get the cart before the horse. Yes. Ain't you going to say something to that or this? And look at their hair. Look at the way they're dressed. Look at it. No, I'm not. <laughs> you better bet I'm not. Amen. Because, oh, my, who am I to judge anybody? Amen. Amen. God is calling out to the world. He's calling out. Does everybody have to come in and wear a suit? Well, I'll wear a suit every time. Does everybody have to come in and wear a tie? No, I don't wear a tie every time. Man, I pay a lot of money for them. I wear them every now and then. Amen. Amen. Does everybody have to come in and wear a dress? No, does everybody have to come dumb? You yeah, know, dumb. It's not about any of that. Amen. It's about your heart. Amen. Have you given it to Christ? Yes. Have you gave him everything? Lord, Did you come in hungry, though? Yes. Hallelujah. If you came in hungry for the Word of God, you're not going to be occupied with the color of the car or the temperature of the room, you're not going to be occupied with what this one's wearing or what that one's wearing. You're going to be occupied on the things of God. Yes. Oh, my. So many people get tired. They get tired and get caught up in things that mean nothing right. when it comes to the end. Yes. Oh, my. You're going to stand before a righteous judge. Yes. And it's not going to be me. Yes. And it's not going to be anybody standing sitting in here today. You want to stand before the Lord. And my Lord does keep a record. He keeps a record of everything you do and everything I do. Amen. He keeps a record. And he knows. If you're living in sin today, he already knows it. And you already know it. If you need Jesus today, he already knows it. And you already know it. Oh, my. But so many people that have me just barely scraping by. Amen. I don't want to just scrape by. 
Amen. I want the fullness of God. I want what God has done. I want the power of the Holy Ghost in my life. I want to have the power and the anointing to fall on me. Amen. To where the Lord can use me. Oh, because so many people try to function in their own power. You can go so long in your own power, but you can't go very long because you need the power of the Holy Ghost in your life to be a servant of the Lord. Oh, my Lord. Oh, I wouldn't go around and serve them people. Why not? Why wouldn't you stand behind the counter and serve somebody? Even if they are able to serve themselves. We are servants of God. Amen. Pastors are servants of the servant of the servants. Amen. Oh, yes. Oh, my. Some people need to be knocked down for high horse. You know what? Ain't the preacher going to knock them off for high horse. It's the Holy Ghost. Amen. God will knock you off your high horse. You think you're too good for something, look out. Right. Right. Well, I can't eat leftovers. Look out. You may not have leftovers to eat. Right. Well, I can't drive this. Look out. You may not have nothing to drive. Right. I can't wear this. Look out. You may not have nothing to wear. Right. Oh, my. We've got to, we've got to be content yeah. with such things that we have. Amen. Because, oh, I've said many times that the Lord said, amen, that godliness with contentment is great gain. Amen. When we're content with what the Lord has blessed us with, then he might bless us a little bit more. Amen. But until we get content with what God has blessed us with, he's not going to bless us anymore. Well, how do I stay content? Amen. You have to stay in prayer. You have to stay close to God. You have to stay. Because when you, oh, you're not, I'll go ahead and tell you, you're not going to stay content. But the word of God tells us that man, uh, the eyes of man are never full. Amen. Never satisfied. Amen. You might be content for a week or a month, maybe even a year. Mm -hmm. Then something's going to catch you. Yeah. Boy, I wish this would change. That would change. Then you're going to be grumbling. You're going to be bitter. Well, you better be content. Amen. 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 That's what God wants. He wants us to be content yeah. with what He's blessed us with. Yeah. Oh, my. Content. You know, I, I got a set of driver's license here. You know, I went, I guess I went for about 13 years. And I didn't have a set of these. You know, I was content driving without it. But the law wasn't. It didn't, it, they didn't like it. Because every time they pulled me over, license registration. Hmm. Here's registration. God had an ID card. This isn't the driver's license ID. Oh. Step out of the car, please. Amen. But see, now that I know the Lord, now it took me some time. Amen. Because I got in a lot of trouble not having a license. Drinking and driving. That's why I didn't have a license. That's why I got locked up. Amen. It took me a lot of time to get these back. I don't have any special endorsements. I can't hardly even see them. I don't have any endorsements. I gotta wear glasses, it says. But I'm content with that. Because I've got license. These are a right. No, 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 you're wrong. <laughs> these are a privilege. These are not a right. Young people, that you're about to get one, that's what they look like. I'll vote. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> These are a privilege. It can be taken away. Amen. 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 Who in here? No, oh, I ain't going to ask. I know there's many of you had your license taken away. Amen. But thank God when we, it took me over 10 years to get mine back, my privilege back to drive. Amen. But you know, if I had just misplaced them, I could have went to the DMV and got them. But I didn't lose them that way, did I, honey? When I met my wife, my, my mother had told her that uh, I had lost my license. Oh, baby, I lost <laughs> My mother told me that I was a good young man. <laughs> but I had lost my license. But I didn't get in specifics. Why? I, I wanted to think I had misplaced them. <laughs> <laughs> See, I didn't marry no dummy. She knew. She knew. Amen. And when you lose them, 
They're gone. It takes time to get them back. And you know, there's times when you're going to feel like you have lost your relationship with Christ. There's times you're going to feel like you're not walking hand in hand with Him. There's times you're going to feel like you're not carrying Him around. Well, you know, during those times, He's the one carrying you around. He's the one carrying you because we need to be carried a lot of times. Amen. Oh, and I thank God that He has offered the privilege of salvation to each and every one of us. To this whole world. Amen. Oh, my. You said you can lose, you can lose your salvation. I'm saying you walk away from the Lord. Amen. I'm saying you walk away from the Lord. You can get out of a relationship with Christ. Amen. You need to keep a close relationship with Him. You know, because the farther you get away, the easier it is to keep going opposite direction. You got to stay close to the Lord. Yes. Amen. Yes. If I moved to Maryland and stayed away from my wife for a year, do you think I'd come back? Well, if I could stay gone for a year, I might as well not. <laughs> Go ahead and say amen right there. <laughs> amen. When you love somebody, you're going to stay close to them. When you love somebody, you're going to stay right there with them. You know, he loves you so much. He sent his son to die on the cross. Amen. Even when you don't feel like you've got a relationship, he's still there for you. Yes. He's standing there with open arms wanting you to come back. He said, oh, you're not going to have to wait. Just come on back and love on me. He wants to hug you up close. He wants to hug you up and tell you how much he loves you. Oh, my. How does he show us he loves us? Oh, we're alive, aren't we? We're alive. We're well, amen. Oh, and we're not on the way to hell if you're saved. Praise God. Oh, I hope you come hungry. Amen. Because the word tells us, Jesus says, Blessed are those who do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. How many people are hungry today for the word of God? How many people are hungry today to be filled up? How many people are hungry, amen, to eat the things of the Lord? You're still thinking about McDonald's. Or Jones, or the truck stop, or the crock pot. Amen. You better be thinking about what God has got for you, because you should want to be blessed. Amen. You know, Jesus met their physical need in our text before He met their spiritual need. You know, He met their physical need. Boy, isn't that the way God is? He meets our physical need many times, doesn't He? Our spiritual need, He wants us to bring to Him. But he, he met my need while I was out in sin before I knew Christ. Man, I, I didn't go hungry. I didn't go without. Amen. He met my physical need. Amen. Well, who did that? No, no, God did that. God did. Through my parents sometimes. Through other people sometimes. Amen. But God made a way. Every time. Jesus, he will meet your physical need, but he also meets your spiritual need because your spiritual need is most important. Amen. What you need is Jesus. You need him most of all. Amen. Jesus says, well, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. You ever believe in me will never be thirsty. Thank God. Thank God. We can eat of the bread of life and we can drink of the living water. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Oh, my. But, you know, we see the multitude. We see, amen, physical hunger. But, you know, we also see spiritual hunger sometimes. And, and then we see emotional hunger. A lot of people are emotionally starving to death. A lot of people, they have never known unconditional love. A lot of people haven't known love. A lot of people haven't been treated good. A lot of people, amen, they, they need emotional needs, man. Amen. 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 But you know, Jesus is good at that too. Amen. amen. The people around you may not be the best. Amen. But Jesus is the best at everything he does. Amen. amen. 
because a hole in the soul, it can't be filled with food. Only the Lord can fill that. Amen. Only the Lord can fill that void. Only the Lord can fill that hole in your heart that is shaped just like Jesus. Only the Lord can fill that. Amen. Oh, wow. We've got so many people, young and old alike, that are still trying to figure out where they fit in in life. Trying to figure out why they're important. Trying to figure out, amen, why people put them down. Why people make fun of them. Why, 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 why? But you know, Jesus can answer all those questions. People are always going to be against you. If you're for Christ, there's going to be people against you. Amen? Going to be against you, period. You know, but love is something that's so good, isn't it? Who in here likes love? Who likes to be loved? Amen? We all do, don't we? You know, in Jesus over in Matthew 25, 32, 39, he didn't say, when I was hungry, you felt sorry for me. When I was naked, you felt shame for me. When I was in prison, you were embarrassed for me. When I was sick, you were sympathetic for me. Love is what you do, not what you feel. Oh! That's not what Jesus said. When I was hungry, you fed me. Oh, my. When I was naked, you clothed me. When I was in prison, you came and visited me. When I was sick, you helped me. Oh, we see what the Lord wants to do. The Lord wants us to be doers. The Lord wants us to be doers. Amen. Amen. Love is something you do. It's not something you feel. Oh! That ought to cut you. Because I know we all need help in that. Amen. Amen. We all need help. Amen. Love is, you show me your love. Don't just tell me I love you. My wife looking at me like, mm. <laughs> See, we all need help. Even the pastor needs help. Show me. Don't just tell me. That's just like the Lord. The Lord wants you to show him you love him. How are you going to show him? You're going to turn your life over to him. Amen. 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 You're going to, if you love me, you'll obey my commandments. Amen. You'll be a doer. It's not something you feel. Boy, I feel on fire today. Well, you might not tomorrow. When the rain comes down and you start to smolder, when trouble comes into your life, amen, we need to just start being kind to one another. Amen. Random acts of kindness. Boy, that's something great. Amen. Just do something nice for somebody. Christian, do something nice. Say, it. Say something nice. Amen. Just be nice. Amen. Look at the one beside you and say, be nice. <laughs> I saw some of them look at anybody. <laughs> be nice. You can't even be nice to the one beside you. <laughs> and we're trying to reach worldwide. <laughs> you need to be kind to the people that are around you. I want you to look around for people in here. A very diverse group of people. Very diverse. Amen. You know, you don't know what everyone's going through. You don't even know what your wife's going through. You don't know what your husband's going through. You don't really know what your children are going through. Here, you may see it outwardly, but you don't know what they're going through here. Amen. I hope they trust you enough to tell you. I hope there's enough love there, amen, where you can be understanding. I hope, amen, that you can be kind to one another because you don't know what all these people around you are going through. Amen. Boy, we quick to judge. Yes. Amen. Boy, I would never, I would not Oh, don't you even. Amen. Don't you even. Right. Yes, you would. Don't you never. I would never. Oh, my. You don't ever know what you do. Right. If you walked a mile in their shoes, amen. Right. amen. If you walked two miles in their shoes, Lord tells us not to judge. Judge not lest ye be judged. Yes. 
Amen. What? By the same measure. You'll be, you'll be judged even worse. Amen. But when we try to judge other people, we we try to get a little speck of dust out of somebody else's eye. And we've got a two-way sticking through our head. The Lord tells us to get the beam or get that two-way out of your head before you try to get the speck out of your brother or sister's eye. Amen. 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 That more or less telling you, mind your own business and take care of yourself. Amen. Spiritually. That's right. Amen. Oh, I know church people's got long noses. They like to point them and put them in everybody's business. Yeah. Yep, I got one. Amen. 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 Well, you know, if we spent time in our own business, Amen. our own relationship with Christ, we would be closer to Christ than ever because we can't get caught up in other people's. It's hard enough to keep ourselves in a close relationship. I want my children to walk close with God, but I can't make them. Amen. I want my family to walk close with God, but I can't make them. Amen. Do I go to them and beat them over the head of the Bible? I did it one time, and I found out that does not work. It'll run off. It'll turn them hard against the Lord. Amen. You just show the love. Amen. You show the love of Christ. And Christ so does. And that was, the Holy Ghost will do the rest. The Spirit of God will do the rest. Amen. He will draw them. He will. Not on your time. Look at this. A new commandment I give unto you. What? That you love one another. God loved you that you also love one another. By this you all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one for another. Well, I ask you to look to one side and say, be kind. Now look to them and love. I love you all. Come on now. They may not have heard it in years. I love you. I love you. Amen. If you can't tell the one beside you you love them, then you got problems. Because the Word of God tells us to love one another. Jesus tells us. That's in red. Jesus tells us to love one another. Doesn't say just love the white people. Doesn't say just love the black people. Doesn't just say love the Asian. Doesn't just say love the Spanish or Latino. It Amen. says love one another. Amen. 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 We have got to break down some walls of racism and walls of legalism. We've got to break down some things and love one another. Amen. Oh, my. He's just said and done. Boy, right here is something that's so true. Mental bruises take longer to heal. Amen. Mental bruises. Who in here has been mentally bruised? <clears throat> Be kind. You just never know what someone else is going through. Amen. Be kind. You know, a, the love of Christ can go a long way. You could save a life and never even know it. Amen. You could save a life and never even know it just by, hey, how are you? I love you. You could. You could do that. Amen. You just have to learn to be kind. Look at this. Proverbs 25 and 11 is so good. How many of you have ever said a mean word to anybody? Amen. How many of you ever hurt anybody's feelings? Amen. How many of you ever give them a brain bruise, a male bruise? Not physically, but... Amen. Everyone else in here. You hurt people with your words, can't you? Amen. amen. Your words, Proverbs 25 and 11, amen. A word really spoken is like apples of gold in pictures of silver. Mm, that's a pretty thought, isn't it? That's the word of God. A word fitly spoken, advice properly given, amen, it, it's immeasurable, it's valuable, because these young people, I look at them, there's no doubt some of them has made fun of each other. Look at these old people in here, look, look at the ones around them. You've made fun of some of them. You've said things about me, oh, look up, look, just look at me, you've said things about me, I guarantee it. Yes, he said things about me. But a kind word can make a big difference. A nice word can change.
change the outcome. Because there are people in this world that have not heard I love you in years. They have, may have never have heard it. Well, I show my love. Don't fool yourself. People want to hear it and they want you to show it too. Well, I'll buy them everything they want. And that's the way I show my love. No, 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 no. You cannot buy love. It's not in possessions. Love is not bought. They mean you have to show it. Amen. Amen. And when you show it, you're going to tell it. Oh, this has got to be cutting some people. Because it's cutting me. I'm up here bleeding to death. You ain't even showing no compassion. <laughs> Amen. God has given us resources, too. He's given us resources. You know, all around you, there are people who are hurting. Look around. Let everybody look around. Look one beside you. You think they're going to tell you they're hurting? No. No, chances are they're not. There's people all around you hurting. Again, if people need your love, people need your encouragement, let God use your gift and talents to bless them. You can be a blessing. Who wants to be a blessing? Amen. We should all want to be a blessing. You can be a blessing by just being nice to somebody. Been somebody that has been kicked around and treated like dirt their whole life. You can be nice to them and change their whole life. Amen. It makes a big difference when you come into church and people tell you they love you or they missed you. It makes a big difference when you come into church and people tell you, oh, my name is, it's so good to have you. It makes a big difference when people tell you Jesus loves you. Amen. Amen. It makes a big difference when they're not looking down their long nose with a pointy finger. Oh, my. It makes a big difference. Amen. It really does. Oh, God's given us resources that we can use in emotions, but He's also given us financial resources. Amen. But whoso hath this world good and see if his brother hath made and shut up his bow. Oh, there's that word compassion again. From him, how dwelleth the love of God in him? My little children, let us not love in word, neither in tongue, and in deed, and in truth. Amen. So many people set up their vows of compassion. If you have the means, the world's good, and you see your brother in need, and you don't give it to him, what have you done? How dwell with the love of God in you? I'll explain the NLT says, if someone has enough money, let's just put it down there. If someone has enough money to live well and sees a brother or sister in need but shows no compassion, how can God's love be in that person? Mm -hmm. Dear children, let's not merely say that we love each other. Let us show the truth by your actions. Our actions will show that we belong to the truth so we will be confident when we stand before God. Amen. Oh, when you stand before God, well, that's something to think about. Have you shut up your vows of compassion towards your brothers and sisters in Christ? It's all about you, me, 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 me. Hoarding up all the money you can, amen. Well, you know, the Lord says, for what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? You gotta give your heart to Jesus. It doesn't matter how much money you got. And I, <laughs> I've never stood over the bed if somebody dies. Said, oh, think about how much money I got. I'd give it all if I could just get out of this hospital. I'd give it all if I could walk again. I'd give it all. That's not the way it works. I'd give it all if I could see my son or my daughter again. That's not the way it works. Mm -hmm. What shall it profit? If you gain the whole world and lose your own soul. It's not about money. It's not about possessions. It's about Him. Amen. Whosoever, whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words in his adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall some man be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father and with his holy angels. Oh my. God is a God of miracles. I don't know your heart this morning, but I know each and every one come in need of something today. You come in need of being fed the Word of God. You come in need of being encouraged. And I want you to leave encouraged because you know that God loves you. Jesus loves you. The Holy Ghost is dwelling in you if you're saved. Amen. Now get busy. Do 
circle. Show God. Don't show the preacher. Show God. Because everything you do, you should be doing for the Lord, not for me. Amen. Everything you do, you should be doing for Him, not for the one beside you. Amen. Oh, yes. But God is a God of miracles. I can't never change. God is a God of miracles. Amen. 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 Some of you, I heard you say before you come in here, the, the roof would fall in. It's still good. Amen. And hell hadn't froze over. Amen. I was one of them. I said that. Look where I'm at now. By the grace of God. Amen. 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 I should be dead. That wasn't God's plan. Oh my. Amen. We see multitudes that are going to hell. We see a lot of physically hungry people, emotionally hungry people. Jesus gives us resources. He gives us knowledge. He gives us speech. He gives us emotion. He gives us bowels of compassion. Jesus saves and he'll fill us up spiritually. Say that if you'll come. I don't know every heart here, but I know God does. You know what you come in need of today. You know if you're hungry or not hungry. You know if you're thirsty or not thirsty. See, I just took a drink of water because I was thirsty. You can come and take a drink of the living water. Amen. See, I, I'll get thirsty again. But you know, when I drunk of the Lord, mm -mm -mm, He satisfied a thirst that I can't even explain. Amen. And if you're here today and you're lost, you know that thirst. When I ate of the Lord, he satisfied a hunger that I can't even explain. But if you're here today and you're lost, you know that hunger. He can fill you up. And He can make you not thirst again for the things of God. For salvation. Because we're going to stay thirsty. We better stay thirsty for the things of God. We better stay hungry for the things of God. But you've got to come to know Him. Personally. That's all, Stan. You've got to come to know Him personally as Lord and Savior of your life. Because Jesus paid it all. You go down here to the restaurant this evening, this afternoon, you're going to get a bill at the end of it unless somebody, unless you're freeloading on somebody. And then they're going to pay it. Somebody's going to have to pay the, the bill. Amen. I didn't see free dinners here at the truck stop today. Did you? Okay, I didn't miss it. But I did see that Jesus paid the price for my salvation. He paid it in full. I'm not going to get a bill for it. He paid the price for your salvation. Amen. Favorite scripture. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world. Thank you. He told me to the Son. Whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. He paid the price. Amen. He paid a debt that I never could. If you're here today and you're lost, you need to come as they play. If you're here today and you need Jesus, you need to come. You need to come now. I wouldn't wait. I wouldn't put it off. If you're here today and you need him, you need to come now. You just need to come and pray. If you want to come and pray, come and pray. But most of all, if you don't know Jesus, you need to come. I can pray with you, but I can't see you. I know the one that can, his name is Jesus. I'll show you scriptures in the Word of God.